With the clip geometry projected into the canonical view volume, we're now ready to determine where exactly on this final two-dimensional image plane the vertices of all the polygons should be positioned. Now let's pause for a second and realize an important point about the coordinates used in the CVV. Right, so after the so-called perspective division step during projection, we're left with what we call uh, normalized coordinates inside the CVV, right? And let's just recall exactly what these normalized coordinates looked like, right? Uh, we, we were using uh, negative 1 to 1 on the x-axis, right? Uh, negative 1 to 1 on the y-axis as well, right, for the CVV, as well as, uh, no, and we just used the example of uh, 0 to 1 on the z-axis, of course, this, uh, you know, the, the Z coordinates here are going to vary from implementation to implementation. Uh, we could just as easily be working with negative one to one on the Z axis. But we'll, we'll just stick with this example of using uh, Z coordinates starting at zero. Right, so these are normalized coordinates. They're uh, very easy to remap to some other range of coordinates. And, and, and these are called normalized device coordinates in that they act as an intermediate stage, making possible the transformation to an actual screen or image, right? If we knew, if we knew we were always going to be rendering to a maybe 1920 by 1080 pixel image, then while well, we could get rid of this intermediate step altogether and we could just uh, transform directly into this particular range of screen space coordinates. However, because the dimensions of the final image are not considered earlier in the rendering pipeline, we prepare normalized device coordinates and then remap those values to the uh, what we'd call the render target or the screen or image that we are rendering to. All right, so uh, with, with our normalized device coordinates ready to go, we're going to remap those coordinates to a new range uh, from, uh, from 0 on the x and 0 on the y to, let's draw out our new range of x coordinates here. Uh, this, uh, this is going to, uh, along the horizontal axis here, heading off to the right hand side, this is going to be the maximum x value, right? So x is going to increase as we move from left to right. And then, well, things get a little bit weird here and uh, perhaps a bit unexpected uh, from our, our experience with, uh, you know, the, the Cartesian coordinates we typically use. Um, but Y is going to actually increase as we go down vertically. And this is just the convention that is used for screen space coordinates, where uh, origin is in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, and then we increase x and y values from there. All right, so these coordinates are now in screen space, uh, which, is, which is just a, a new two-dimensional coordinate space where one unit represents one pixel. All right, so uh, every every unit here, let's start at zero, go one, two, three, right? Every, every unit here does represent a single pixel. However, it's very important to realize that this is not a discrete coordinate space. Uh, this is still a, we can, we can use floating point numbers here. It is a continuous uh, range. And in fact, it's actually kind of important to realize here that the centers of pixels are actually located at half unit increments, right? So uh, 0 0.5 on the X would give us the center of this pixel and 0 0.5 on the Y, right? And likewise, 1.5, 2.5, those would give us the centers of individual pixels. Now, with those Z coordinates that we had in the CVV, well, again, we, we hang on to those and we pass those off to the next stage of rendering, which is called rasterization. Those Z coordinates are going to be very important to us. So we definitely hang on to those.